Hi, how you doing? Um, welcome to my Bossa Nova video, part one. This will be this part short. This is going to be Bossa Nova with sticks. Part two will be incorporating the brushes. And I will get into a little bit of brush technique, not a lot. Brush technique is so varied, I don't want to open that can of worms at this moment. I will, eventually. Um, the Bossa Nova. Today's times, and we've said this before, you just got to be ready for any gig that comes your way. Maybe you've been playing mainly rock pre the pandemic, you know, rock and roll has been your thing, the rock and blues thing, and you've been making good money at it and teaching, and that is valid, and more power to you. Maybe you're doing the wedding band thing, and that's sort of cut down. People aren't having the big receptions, they, they're unemployed, they can't afford a whole lot. So you've got to take whatever gig comes, and bosses are very... Very, uh, buses are something that are used a lot in, you know, cocktail gigs, restaurant gigs, and you got to play kind of quiet, and they're kind of a very, very cool little dancey groove that is very subtle. Uh, it's out of South America, of course. Uh, and let's talk about the origins a little bit, uh, and under really the origins in this country. You know, big band kind of made them popular a little bit if we go back to the 50s, you know, uh, Count Basie, uh, Tommy Dorsey with Sinatra, uh, the, uh, Shadow of Your Smile, that I think the very first version I heard of it was a bossa. Uh, great, great hit for Frank. Uh, and, the, and the list goes on of tunes of that era that were bossas. They're very subtle, quiet, you know, it's not a lot of loud playing, but it's very danceable. And it's got the traditional Latin ostinato. Ostinato means a repetitive pattern, which is this. One, two, and three, four, and 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 one. Okay? And on top of that, you are basically putting what would be called a 3-2 or a 2-3 clave. Now, there are some variations of this, of course, and... If you're playing this and you get a call from guys maybe you've never met, most guys don't need you to be ridiculously strict with the 3-2 pattern on the bassa. And this would be the 3-2 pattern that you would probably do, right? It's 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and you can turn it around. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 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 we can mess around with it a little bit. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 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 1. Again, I'm messing a little bit, and I probably wouldn't mess around with it that much during a bassa. What's important about the bassa is that you've got a, a pattern that is close to that pattern, the 3-2 or the 2-3, or the going, and this ostinato. Boom, 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 boom. So let's play the total hand pattern. Now, you're, when you're doing a bassa, you are em emulating the work of five percussion players. That's what you're doing. You know, sometimes six, sometimes seven, sometimes three, but a couple of the Latin things that I've played with had, you know, up to five or six Latin guys. Cuica players and all sorts of stuff like that. So you're emulating that. So this would be a shaker. Your hi-hat would be like the shaker, which is generally doing eighth notes, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So we're putting the clave with that. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four. And now let's add the bass drum. One and two and three and four and 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 one. Now, I don't like doing straight eighth notes like that in my basso. A little too stale. I, it's too stale doesn't groove as well couple of other approaches. Okay, first of all, a rhythm you really want to try to incorporate is that boom, t boom, boom, t boom, boom. So I might accent the two and four. 
Now in my hands I got Right? And now let's add my feet. That works. I've got that boom, tip, boom, boom, tip, boom, boom. You can get a little fancier and you can add quarter notes. Now I'm kind of pushing the quarters. Let's do that. Now I'm breaking away a little bit from the tip. Boom, tip, boom, uh, boom, tip, boom, boom, tip, boom, boom. My mouth gets confused sometimes. So but let's do that and let me show you. And then I'm going to show you something else you can do, which is also kind of cool. So, watch. Right? Very cool so far. Now... One of the other things I like to do on a bassa is I like to hit my hi-hat on two and four. Trying to avoid a, uh, an open hi-hat sound. I don't want that, I just want this. So watch when I, I just play just two and four with my foot hitting the two and four underneath eighth notes. Now I'm not having to hit harder. Right? I just got a different texture. I've got that ch sound underneath the sound. Again, if I put that together, now I've got that boom, t boom, boom. We can throw the little cross stick on top of that. We can add that to the quarter note push. Now look at all that I got going on. I've got a shaker kind of feeling doing I got that boom 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 and I've got the clave. So now I'm doing the work of three guys that would be the percussion players for the Latin band. And that kind of stuff will make the people you're playing with happy. Let's throw one more little thing, actually a couple more little things. So there's the fish guy, you know, in some of the uh, Latin bands. So how do we incorporate that? Well, I've seen a couple of different videos on this. I've got my own take on it. And then it's just to open it up on one and three. Right? I like, there's a couple of other ways to do that. This is the one I like the best. I think it's the most, it's the cleanest. So let's do that for a second. Let's get the whole thing going. And there you have it. Excuse me. And there you have it. Right, I've got the fish thing going on, I've got when that closes, I've got the, right, it's not so monotonous with the, I've got it breaking up a little bit, so now I'm doing the work of like four guys. Let's throw another little uh, monkey wrench in, the, in this thing. So, again, when you're doing bosses, Latin kind of stuff like this. You want to avoid monotony if you can. Um, you know, this is not a rock and roll tune. And sometimes, you know, depending on the room and the boominess, can just come off a little bit too, you know, eighth notey rather than that bop, 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 that very syncopated rhythm. So I'm going to break up my hat. I'm going to break up my hat. I'm going to put, uh, it on sock symbol, and I'm going to kind of fill in the notes with my clave. Uh, play, actually, playing the hi hat, the hi will be filling in around my clave. Watch what I'm talking about. This is just my hands. So I'm leaving little holes and breaking it up a little bit. Now we can add to that the two and four.
can add that, make that a simple thing too. Now I played around with it a little bit, I was kind of having a little bit of fun, but let's put the whole thing together, let's add it with uh, the metronome. Uh, I've got the metronome on 120. Wait a minute, my system volume is telling me is low. There you go. I got the metronome on 120. Hopefully you can hear that. Uh, and let's start with the hat. I'm gonna break it up. Right, I'm gonna have the sock on two and four and I'll move it over to the cymbals. So you can see how kind of cool this is and I'm not playing very loud. I'm kind of having fun with it. Here we go. One. Two, one, two, three, four. to it right but that's it that's 120 and that's a good tempo now here's a kind of cool thing when you're doing that syncopated you can actually increase the tempo quite a bit and just watch how kind of cool it sounds and how quiet and subtle and yet it's kind of moving along here we go one two one two three four phrase I could solo a little bit. A little more. Two, three, four. And there you have it. So, and 141, and I'm not killing myself on that. I've got syncopation. I could probably push that to 150 or 160 if I really had to. Um, generally you don't do bosses that fast in cocktail hour. So I hope this helps you. I hope you do great. I hope you find gigs. Stay tuned for part two. I'm going to show you some other ideas of the bossa using brushes. Once again, I'm not going to get into a lot of brush technique. Some I think you can do and pick up and get better at brush technique. Lots of videos on YouTube about that. Stay tuned for part two. See you soon. Welcome back to part two of my lesson on bosses. So now we're going to incorporate the brushes. And what I did in part one will work fine for most gigs, but there are those dinner clubs, those supper clubs, and sometimes just you're not even doing a dinner club or a supper club. These are just very cool versions of the bassa that utilize brushes, and the brushes can add a different texture to what you're doing, as well as help you in a a dinner club to play you know more subdued quieter but yet still do some cool little bossa grooves right that even might get a few smiles from the guys you're playing with anyway let's go for it right now so I use um, not for everything I, I do use uh, the non um, well these brushes are the Steve Gadd brushes what I mean by non, they have a little curl going up and they're really kind of good uh, for the scraping I'm about to do and where I'm going to do it and kind of the, the very edge has sort of a different sound than the back edge of the brush so I kind of like that. However, I don't use these brushes for everything when I'm doing just strict brush work. I tend to use brushes without that little uh, curl up at the end. These are the Steve Gadd Vic Firth brushes. They're fantastic. The best thing about them is the little ridges, right? So 
I now am going to choke up a little bit. I pull this back so it's out on the first little ridge. And really now essentially what I've got is a soft stick. And that is, or this is, the first version I'm going to teach you of the bassa. Pretty much very similar to what we just did, except instead of playing... We're going to play it on the head of the snare, about two inches from the edge, right? And I like to do it. You can do it with a brush fanned out. It's okay. It doesn't matter that much. But we're going to play this like a soft stick with the brush choked back a little bit, and you'll see. We're still going to use the cross stick, right? I'm going to play right here, again, about two inches from the edge of the drum, maybe three. Uh, and my head is deadened already because my hand is resting on the center of the drum, right? And I'm going to quietly, but I can still give it a little hit because it is a brush, uh, quietly play eighth notes by hitting it with this brush. So watch. So let's add everything with that. Now you see, now I've got a very much a sort of shaker sound with this. I've got the clave. I've got the kind of like what the Fuji might do. And I've got the boom, boom, boom. Again, I'm emulating three or four guys. I'm playing at a dinner club. I'm quiet. It's relaxed. It's cool. Okay, let's add a little monkey wrench into that. That whole thing I showed you before where I'm not playing every note, you know, with, with my uh, right hand. I'm breaking it up a little bit, and I'll pick the tempo up just a little bit. Messing around, having some fun, doing it uh, different ways again. Not keeping that cha 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 because, again, we want to avoid monotony in these type of grooves. This is not a rock and roll tune. All right, let's go to the next version, a little more complicated. And if you look at the close up cam, uh, which I will have either right in front of this section or right after it, haven't decided yet, haven't put it in yet. Um, we're going to fan out the brush to its completeness, right? Make sure when you're using this kind of brush, and this is good for this kind of thing, you've got that little curl where it curls up, you know, uh, curling up to the sky, not down to the drum. It's going to create a, a, a bad sound for you, a really bad scratching sound. So this is called the scrape. The scrape. Again, I mentioned this in the close-up cam. I'm playing horizontally, not vertically horizontally, not vertically. I'm going to be doing the eighth notes right here. One and two and three and four and 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 and I can change that speed. Right, and I am hitting again, I mentioned the close-up cam, I'm hitting with the very edge where that little curl uh, comes up on the brush on the head. Uh, it's it's down, I'm playing down, I'm letting the brush sort of rest, so even if I push this down, it comes right back. I'm being very light and gentle. There's no stress or tension in my hand whatsoever, whatsoever. The looseness helps this to flow the right way, okay? So watch this. Now I got my cross stick, just like we did before, uh, and I'm going to do the scraping. So here we go. One and two and three and four and 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 three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Now let's add everything. Again, we've got really the scraping going on, and that is very much like what some of those guys together would sound like. Maybe if you combine the fish and the shaker and all that kind of stuff, you've got a, a very 
cool texture to place under the basa. Again, let's add the hi-hat, let's add the bass drum, and here we go. traditional grip um, however you can do this match grip it's fine let's talk about my match grip hand first because a lot of you will be playing match grip and you can do what I'm about to do with both hands so what I'm doing in the basa I want an eighth note feel when I'm scraping we already kind of discussed that so this is what I'm doing all right this is my forefinger stretched out on the brush my thumbs up on top this is a, a really true French grip I'm resting the stick on the, whatever, the second finger or whatever you want to call that. It's not, this is the ring finger, right? I'm not sure what finger that is. But um, I'm doing this. And if you want to put a little, a little more speed on it for the uh, tempo you're at. So you can see very little effort on my part. And if I wanted to, I can throw some accents by just putting, pulling the brush down, or pushing the brush down, I should say. Right? And just by getting more um, of the strands on the drum. But for the scraping, where, where, especially if I'm doing it with the cross stick, I want a very free-flowing brush. You know, and I can go pretty quick without much effort at all. Let's look at my traditional grip hand. It's the same thing. Remember, if you're going to do match grip from both, what I just did for my left, you can do for your right. So it's the same thing. Now, when I'm doing, if you noticed, uh, it's very short strokes with a little more pressure because I'm making an accent. But it's kind of the same thing when you're flowing. If I, if I was going to do accents here, right, I've got, instead of the two fingers over, I've kind of got the, the fingers on the brush and I'm pushing. However, for this particular groove, I'm not doing that. I'm doing traditional grip and I'll be squeezing and applying pressure. Watch when I go slow. Let's get uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So I'm sort of guiding the stick with my first finger and hitting, kind of hitting to apply, apply quick pressure with, again, I don't know what finger that is, the second finger or the third one from the thumb. So again, If, if I go slower or faster, or I, I want to make a, a, a louder brush sound, and there you have it. You have a boss of feeling, very quiet, very understated, and that is a technique. It is a horizontal move as opposed to a vertical move. I'm going to say that one more time. Horizontal as opposed to vertical. 
now back to our video. not something I do a lot. I, I'll do one here with the bass drum on it, but you know, um, I probably wouldn't uh, if I was playing live and, and I had to be this quiet. Because uh, this is a very subtle basa, but it's very cool. And I have done gigs where I just brought snare drums. This is a snare drum and a hi-hat. Either because that's all that would fit to the club, or that's all they really needed. You know, it's going to be very light playing. And this is a great, great thing for that. Uh, you know, you might be the one guy in your town that can do that kind of thing, bring a snare drum and play all sorts of stuff. And I've done that. Rock grooves, and with a brush and a stick, you can do all sorts of things. For this particular version, we're going to use two brushes. Okay, we just went over doing this. That's what you're going to do with your lead hand. For you, it might be your right. For me, it's my left. With my traditional grip hand. I'm going to do just like I did in that close-up cam. Uh, using more of the brush, I'm going to do very short strokes. If you notice, most of the action is happening from my two fingers over the brush. And let's get it going so you can see. Let's slow it down. Sort of a little light hit. Yeah, that's a little, you know, afterwards you hear the, 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 the bounce back. Because this is scraping, you don't notice it so much. Let's add the whole thing now with that. If you notice, I have one very shallow, very small, and then one very long. And I have used both of those. It really depends on how the bass player is playing, how the guitarist is playing, and how quiet I need to be. So hopefully you can, you can see those are some different versions. And there's more. Go on YouTube. I'm going to link you to a guy named Ed Soph, and I've studied his brush technique a lot, and he talks a lot about this whole thing. Right? And there's even a version of this that you can do this way, 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and doing that same kind of accent. Right? Pushing down. And that's really, really, really quiet and very legato. So there's whole, a whole bunch of stuff you can do with brushes with that. And don't just use your brushes for a bossa groove. Utilize them. Because Anything in today's age that you can separate yourself from everybody else to do things that maybe other guys would not do. Uh, one of my uh, favorite groups is the one on Just the Way You Are because uh, Liberty DeVito played one brush and one stick and really does a kind of, it's a kind of mamba or a, a rumba where he's doing it with a brush and a stick and the tom-toms and he does it in a pop song and that is, you know, one of the most heard tunes ever, I Love You Just The Way You Are by Billy Joel, and it's very cool. So we incorporated his wedding band arsenal into his Billy Joel work and made an iconic groove. Uh, anyway, I hope this helps you. I hope you can find your own cool ways to do bassa, and I will put the link again uh, in my description to Ed Sof. Really, really cool stuff. Um, remember, this is a tough time, folks. Live well. Be 
Ciudad.